Hi friends, my name is Sue Swing. I'm a staff member with St. Matthew's Church and this is week two of our summer series on spiritual practices. I'm going to introduce two spiritual practices drawing from Truly Present, Practicing Prayer in the Liturgy by Lisa E. Dayhill and Soul Feast, An Invitation to Christian Spiritual Living by Marjorie Thompson. We'll use the idea of sanctuary today as a way to dig deeper into these practices. And so first of all, I'd like you to think about what is sanctuary? In the dictionary, sanctuary is defined, is defined as a refuge and a place of protection. But what does sanctuary mean for you? What do you think of when you hear the word sanctuary? What does it sound like? What does it look like? And most importantly, what does it feel like for you to be in sanctuary? And next, we'll think about where is sanctuary. And I'm going to talk about three different places that we find sanctuary. And the first one is in the church. Uh, God calls us into a holy space when we come to church. To enter this space means that we are crossing some sort of a threshold, both literally as we move through the doors and symbolically as our hearts tune into the present moment and the presence of the one who is always moving among us and within us. At home this summer, we've been watching some historical dramas based on the warring for the throne in 15th century England. So up to this point in history, the church has been an accepted space for sanctuary. Every time someone runs to the church, it's usually because they need to hide from someone who's trying to kill them. Sleeping on cement floors, with straw for bedding, yet there's still an element of serenity in the safety of that space. And even today, people come to church to feel a sense of security that comes with walking into a place that speaks of love and forgiveness and redemption. Sanctuary is safety. When we enter the church sanctuary, there's a beacon of safety located near the front of the church, the baptismal font, a steady reminder of our participation in the body of Christ. As we see the sign of the cross marked on our newest members, we're part of that experience. We're united. We belong to one and the same family led by Christ. And we're connected across any human barrier that we can construct. Sanctuary is connection. So how do we bring that sanctuary feeling of protection and connection to our home? Especially now, when we're not in the physical space that holds and represents the comfort of our faith. We can try the spiritual practice of baptismal remembrance. Martin Luther practiced this as a daily gift, and we can do this personally as well, splashing ourselves with water first thing in the morning and at the end of the day. You can also do this throughout, throughout your day um, when you encounter water anytime, washing your hands or your face, when you're doing the dishes or watering your flowers. As the water runs through your fingers, just pause and take a moment to do the sign of the cross. I've got a little shell here that I use sometimes and I keep it um, on my desk where I'm often working and sometimes there's a little bit of water in there and I will use this just, as I said, to do the sign of the cross, whether on my forehead or on my chest or sometimes even in my hands, especially when I'm writing or working on something that involves a lot of concentration. I just like this reminder, and the feeling I get when I do this is a feeling of strong belonging to the family of Christ and comfort. Just an overwhelming feeling of comfort comes when I do this. And we can do this any time of the day that it works for you or any time that you feel like you need that break or want a moment uh, to just reflect on who you are in the family of Jesus. When we do this, we're letting go of failure and stress. We're abandoning our fears and our uncertainties, and returning to our true identity. We are the beloved of God, and so sanctuary is belonging. And what does it feel like to have a heart that is sanctuary? Our hearts opening into the healing and the radiant presence of God will shut down every single time without fail if we greet each tiny opening of feeling or need or desire or sin in ourselves with self-attack. God does not delight in condemning us. Over and over in the Gospels, we see Jesus refusing to condemn or withdraw from the sinful or unclean. He actually seeks them out 
and desires to draw close to them. In the book Truly Present, Lisa Dayhill writes, the aspect of your humanity more distant from Jesus is not your sin or your failure itself, the weakness that you hate in yourself, the shame or desire or poverty or need that you may find undesirable. It's the righteous voice in you, condemning yourself, condemning others. Jesus longs to embrace all that we are, especially those places most shadowy and hidden, most in need of his loving care, his light and his love. He won't leave our sins in charge, our shame unloved, our needs unmet. We know this. But we will never be able to fully bring these things to him as long as we are shriveling ourselves with self-attack. So the spiritual practice of refraining from self-attack is simply refusing to listen to that internal negative chatter, the persistent thoughts about ourself or our others that just aren't helpful. And stopping the mind from running away with thoughts is really hard because I think what happens is we think one bad thought and then another one and then another one. And pretty soon we've constructed this wall of negative thinking or feeling, whether it's about ourselves or someone else. And Jesus just can't get through that. So when you find this happening, try to catch yourself and use these simple steps for praying your heart. So for this spiritual practice, sit comfortably and close your eyes. Visualize Jesus standing before you or seated across from you and hear him say to you, what do you want me to do for you? What is your desire? Next, think about the name of God that you use in prayer. Uh, is it Jesus? Is it Lord? Is it Savior? Is it Comforter? Is it Creator? Make this as personal as you can. And then take your desire that you've shared with Jesus in your name for God and just make it into a short phrase that flows easily. For example, uh, I'm losing my temper too much today. My need is patience. My word for God is most divine. And so in my mind, I'm just going to stop and say patience, most divine. And just repeat that to myself. Patience, most divine. Patience, most divine. You might say self-control, Holy One, perspective, Creator, reassurance, Jesus, comfort, God, forgiveness, most merciful. You get the picture here. Repeat your phrase to yourself several times. And when you encounter thoughts of self-attack or even before you start to engage in self-defeating behaviors, using this spiritual practice will open a sanctuary space in your heart for love, allowing Jesus to love you in this way leads to more self-love, which only naturally flows to others. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let Jesus love you here in your heart. Sanctuary is love. And just like everything else, these spiritual practices will respond well to repetition. It's like an exercise routine or a diet. The more consistent you are, the more um, you will appreciate and enjoy the results you have. Don't give up quickly. Don't think that, oh, I did it once and this isn't working for me. Try it again and again and try it when you're stressed and when you're pressed because it's in that moment that Jesus is waiting to come and be a source of reassurance and comfort and in a lot of, a lot of cases, um, redirection for us, pointing us in the right direction. So baptismal remembrance and praying your heart. These are two ways to experience the safety, connection, belonging, and love that is sanctuary. May the persistence of the Holy Spirit bring you into quiet spaces and places within your home and in your heart, knowing all is well. 